Right, we're rolling, we're in focus. We're good. Bad advice from good musicians. I've had the fortune to spend a lot of time around some really, really talented musicians. From my earliest days of playing guitar right through college, there have always been friends of mine who are, thankfully, better than me at music. And I've learned a ton from them. Some has been, some information has been invaluable, some has been downright puzzling. Let's dive into some of those more puzzling bits today because I want to prevent you from falling into these traps. Bad piece of advice number one. Don't transcribe solos. You don't need to transcribe every solo you ever hear or love, but there are tremendous benefits from knowing a solo top to bottom. Just a few. Your ears get better. Your timing gets better. Your phrasing gets better. You learn other people's phrasings. And this one's probably the coolest one. One of the coolest ones. They're all cool. You get to know what it feels like to play and sound like your favorite musician. When I was 16, I had a friend who told me that he never transcribes a solo. He was a really good guitar player because for some reason, he believed that knowing a solo by Stevie Ray Vaughan from top to bottom was going to hinder his creativity. And this kid was in AP math classes and honors history and honors English. Really smart guy. I don't know why he thought that because where does creativity come from anyway? Steve Jobs famously said that creativity is just connecting things. And where do you find things to connect if not from your inspirations, your influences? Every musician with any sort of distinction can tell you exactly who influenced them or what influenced them. And they're not shy about it. They're really happy to share because without them, they would not be who they are. Without your influences, you are not who you are. So go learn that solo that you've been listening to that you love, it will only help you with your own improv and your own soloing. Bad piece of advice number two. Actually, before we go there, one more thing to say about that. Your influences will only help you, not hinder you. I kind of said that, but I wanted to make sure I reiterated it one more time. It's good to have influences. Okay, bad piece of advice number two. Sleep less, practice more. Now, fortunately, in 2024, we all have the information and there's a lot of research about how important sleep is, but in 2008, the word on the street was, sleep is for suckers, sleep is for chumps. And if you're sleeping, you're not practicing. And if you're not practicing, somebody else is. And when you meet them, that person will be better than you because they practice more. Not if they haven't slept. You need to sleep. You need that seven and a half, eight hours per night. I did one all-nighter when I was at Berkeley, my freshman year, and I hated it. I felt awful the next day. And while I'm sure that I missed out on some late night jam sessions or the three o'clock in the morning raves and parties, I don't think I care. I don't care because I don't have the stamina to do that. I got mono twice from lack of sleep. Not even all nighters, just from a lack of sleep. So you don't need to stay up all night to practice or do anything. Go to sleep. Your body will thank you, your mind will thank you. Those riffs that were giving you a hard time or whatever, they'll synthesize in your head while you sleep. I don't know how, but I can tell you that a good night's rest yields a great practice session. So don't listen to the people that have bags under their eyes. They can't keep their heads up. Go to sleep. It's worth it. This one's near and dear to me. Bad piece of advice number three is don't learn music theory. For reasons unknown, the reason is fear, people often think that knowing music theory will hurt their own creativity. That's two out of five of these things that have that idea. Knowing music theory will not hurt your creativity. I promise you this. Knowing music theory will help you because all music theory is, it's a fancy way of saying, here's how, here's how this works and we figured it out after we wrote it or after we played it. Music theory is a language of explanation. It's not an esoteric idea. It just sounds that way. But 
you don't need to fear it. If you know it, it will help you because if you know your diatonic chords in the same key, you then by definition know which chords are not in that key, which will allow you to be like, oh, I want a, I want a different sound, where can I go grab this? And most of us don't write from music theory, but we do use it to help us if we're stuck or if we need an idea, or we just want to understand how a song works and why it works. And there are many, many guidelines in music, but there are no hard and fast true rules. Maybe playing in time is one that might be the only rule, but even that's fungible and even that has, you know, context for it. So learn some music theory. It will help you understand the songs that you love and the songs you want to play. And if you want to write songs, that helps with that too. This one is my billboard. If I could have the billboard, it would just say, wear earplugs, because the bad piece of advice is to not wear earplugs. But guess what happens? When you lose your hearing, it's gone. You cannot get it back. And so many of your favorite musicians have lost some of their hearing or most of their hearing or have tinnitus or have other, some other kind of inner ear problem and it's brutal. They are constantly living in pain and they're always suffering because they didn't have ear protection. Fortunately, we do. So go to your local drugstore, go to CVS, Walgreens, Dwayne Reed, Wegmans, wherever you can find earplugs and buy some. I promise you, I've been wearing earplugs at concerts since I was 16. I've got custom ones since I was 21. They're not in ears, they're just custom designed for my, my little ears. And they have a decibel filter of 25 decibels. You can make it higher or lower, but the point is, once you lose your hearing, you will not get it back. So if you want to keep enjoying live music, wear your earplugs. I'd even argue wear them in a loud city. If you're in New York, I was in New York a couple weeks ago and I'm like, dang, this place is loud. Should have brought my earplugs. Because again, once you lose it, you don't get it back. I will die on that hill. Wear your earplugs. And my last piece of bad advice from good musicians, this is one that's similar to the sleep one and one that I really fell victim to for a long time. And that is, never take a break. But then I think about athletes and it's like, well, they take breaks, what's the difference? Some people will tell you that breaks are bad. If you go to a competitive music school, they will really tell you that breaks are bad, but sometimes you just need a break. It will let you process stuff on a deeper level. It will let you rest, it will let you recover. You don't have to take six months off, but a day or two is not gonna hurt you. When I was younger, I thought if I miss a day, I'm gonna die. I'm missing a week was like, what are you talking about? Two weeks, anathema. I could not fathom it. Now I'm like, no, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. One of my mentors told me that he took six weeks off from playing the piano. And he said he came back better than ever. I've never done six weeks, but I can see why he came back better than he had been. Because he gave himself time to process stuff to relax, to explore other things and bring that all back into his own music. So it's just, it's like, again, it's like a shorter, actually it's like a longer version of going to sleep. Give yourself some time. You're, you're not gonna go to pot. Like I thought my playing was gonna go to pot if I did, took a break, but I now know from both experience and lots of people telling me, take a break. It's not, it's not gonna kill you. And like Kelly Clarkson said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope that you take this to heart and that you don't fall victim to bad advice. And to recap, number one, I'm gonna put them in the, in the positive terms now instead of the negative terms. Transcribe solos. It will help you get better. Number two, go to sleep. It will help you get better. Number three, learn music theory. It will help you get better. Number four, Wear earplugs, because it will save your hearing, which will make you a better musician. Number five, take a break. It will help you get better. So that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again real soon. Cheers.